Well, hello, children. Do you like to be frightened by movies to the point that you piss your pants like a little baby? Well, this list of ten contemporary horror films that Adam Keith from Don't Talk Loud particularly loves around Halloween will do just that. It's going to make you scream, it's going to make you sweat, and it'll definitely make you shiver. This is the list of ten contemporary horror films that I, Adam Keith, love around Halloween time. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Adam from Don't Talk Loud, and today I'm going to count down 10 contemporary horror films that I personally love around Halloween time. So what exactly does this mean? This means that I've taken 10 films between 1990 and today that I love around Halloween, and I've decided to put them into a top 10 list. Now you may ask, why 1990 till today? Well, there's a lot of great horror films out there that have solidified their place as iconic classics. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, John Carpenter's 1982 remake of The Thing, um, Friday 13th, Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street. These are films that people know exist. Classics like White Zombie and Nosferatu. I've decided to take 10 films, pretty much from the 90s to today, that I feel are relatively still unknown or that a lot of people haven't seen, and I've decided to count them down in what I consider to be a great top 10 list of great contemporary horror films that are perfect for a Halloween horror film night. Let's start the list with number 10. Kicking off the list at number 10 is Jacob's Ladder. This thriller from Adrian Lyne is really, to me, one of the most underrated horror films of the 90s. It's great. It's scary. It's got very disturbing images and quite an excellent performance from its star, Tim Robbins. We follow Tim Robbins, who plays a postal worker in New York City who's also a Vietnam vet. He starts to hallucinate very, very scary-looking demons that appear in his life. He starts to ask the questions, are these demons real or are they part of my imagination? Apart from being a great horror film, it's also a commentary on the use of Agent Orange during the Vietnam War in the 60s. And apart from that, I think it really works well to create the idea of a dramatic thriller, but also work excellently as a horror film. The creature effects are excellent, the writing is phenomenal, and the ending, well, it's definitely going to blow your mind. If you haven't seen this film, I highly urge you to watch it, and I highly urge you to tell me what you think on the site. Number nine on this list is the Spanish film Wreck. This film is quite excellent. As a matter of fact, a lot of these found footage movies like Paranormal Activity and Chronicle and things of that sort really owe a lot to this movie. It takes place in an apartment complex in Barcelona where some kind of possessed creature demon is killing off people in this building. Pretty much, you follow a group of people that are stuck in there, and the fire department's outside, and it's pretty much a frenzy of horror, gore, and very, very jumpy thrills. As a matter of fact, it was eventually remade into the 2008 film Quarantine, starring Jennifer Carpenter. Of course, to me, the original is always the great one, the icon, and it's a film you should watch. It's terrifying, it's jumpy, and it's excellent to watch with your girlfriend, because I guarantee you about 15 times through the film, she's going to jump and grab onto your arm, and you're going to feel like the man. Number nine, Wreck. Tell me what you think. Number eight on the list is a classic from Peter Jackson. It was actually the third film he ever made called Dead Alive. It was released in 1993, and to this day, I hold it up on a list as one of the greatest zombie movies ever made. It draws a very fine line between being a zombie horror film and an outright funny New Zealand comedy. We follow a character named Lionel, who's in love with the town beauty Paquita, but they know they can never be together, so they fight to be together. Add in zombies into the mix, a lot of gore, and a very creative scene with a lawnmower blade, and you have a classic from Peter Jackson before he went on to make films like The Frighteners and The Lord of the Rings trilogy that eventually won him an Oscar. Number eight, Peter Jackson's Dead Alive. Number seven on the list is Misery, a film that really surprises me to this day. It's directed by none other than Mr. Rob Reiner. Would you ever expect Rob Reiner, meathead from All in the Family, to make a great horror film? You'd never expect it, but it did happen. The film stars James Caan and Kathy Bates. James Caan is an author. His car crashes. Kathy Bates takes him in, only to realize that he is the author of one of her favorite series of books starring a character named Misery. When she notices that his last book is going to kill off Misery, she takes him hostage and does very horrific, torturous activities to him as a means to get him to rewrite the novel and bring back the character. Kathy Bates' performance is very convincing. At one moment, she's really sweet and very polite, and at the other moment, she's this horrific psychopath who is capable of anything and everything. What I particularly found so amazing was how scary it was to watch her when she was nice, as also compared to when she went psychotic. Because quite frankly, when someone is that sweet and that nice and that conservative and reserved and you know that they have a dark side, 
well, things can get very interesting. I highly recommend Misery, not only for its performance by Kathy Bates, but also the terrifying idea of being in that situation. You really start to think of what it would be like to be in James Caan's shoes, and you get the shivers throughout the whole film. Number seven is Misery, from Meathead himself, Rob Reiner. Number six on my list is a film that's actually very well known by society. It's called Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, it's a very well known dramatic thriller, but it's also a horror film to me. Why? Because it's got two things about it that really scare me. Hannibal Lecter and Buffalo Bill. Lecter, he's charming, he's cool, he's calm, but he's also a psychopath. He'll snap at any point in time, and he'll do unimaginable things that you'll have nightmares about for weeks. I really loved the way they introduced Lecter, standing there on the other side of the glass. You really see how crazy this man is, but you also see that he's smart and classy. If you were to meet this guy on the street, and you had no idea who he is or what he's done, you would be very convinced that he's a trustworthy guy. You would actually be charmed by him. You'd want to have a drink with him. Just don't piss him off, because you might end up with your face eaten. Number six... Silence of the Lambs. So, are you enjoying the list so far? Are you scared? Are you terrified? Are you reacting the same way that you would if your grandmother came out of the shower and you saw the whole thing? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Well, there's still more to come. There's still much more fright, and you surely will be scared with our remaining five. <laughs> Number five on this list is another Spanish film called Thesis. No, just because I'm half Spanish doesn't mean I'm particularly loyal to Spanish films, but Spanish make great horror movies. Thesis was made back in 1996, and it was directed by a man named Alejandro Amenabar. He eventually made a film called Abra los Ojos, which was remade into none other than the Tom Cruise vehicle Vanilla Sky. It's a very scary film about a young student writing her senior thesis on society's obsession with violence. She meets up with a guy who does or doesn't resemble Johnny Depp a little bit, and together they uncover this incredible mystery about someone torturing and killing students on campus. This has some of the most terrifying scenes I've ever seen in a horror film that doesn't have to do with the supernatural. It's a simple man versus man film of people trying to evade a killer. There's one particular scene in a dark hallway that will freak you out and I urge you to watch it without the lights on. Number five, Alejandro Amenabar's 1996 Spanish horror classic, Thesis. Number four on this list is the 2007 horror film, The Mist. That is one of the best Stephen King adaptations that has come out in modern times. It's directed by Frank Darabont, who also gave us The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, and The Not-So-Great The Majestic. But in 2007, he came back with the phenomenal The Mist. It follows a group of people who are stuck in a grocery store, which is surrounded by a mist that contains very deadly creatures inside of it. And what I love so much is how it doesn't become about the monsters outside the store, but soon starts to showcase the kind of monsters that human beings can become when they're put in a very desperate situation. The ending is also phenomenal. It's a very bad situation, horror film kind of ending, and if you haven't seen it, I highly urge you to watch it. If you pick up the DVD and the Blu-ray, the special edition particularly, you can watch it in black and white if you choose, which I feel adds such a great atmosphere and such a great feeling to watching it, because The Mist does have the feel of a very classic horror film from the 30s, 40s, and even the 50s. So Frank Darabont's The Mist comes in at number four, and if you haven't seen it, please do, and tell me what you think, because I hold this film to such high regard. Number three on the list is David Coep's Stir of Echoes. Who is David Coep? Well, David Coep is a frequent collaborator with Steven Spielberg. He wrote scripts for War of the Worlds and the not-so-great Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But in 1999, as a writer and director, David Coep scored a great hit with Stir of Echoes. We follow Kevin Bacon, who plays an electrician who undergoes hypnosis and eventually starts to have hallucinations and even visions of the ghost of a murdered girl. It's so well done how David Coe builds the intensity and eventually frights his audience half to death. I actually had trouble walking through dark hallways and in dark rooms for about three days after seeing this movie. I think it's such a great movie for its time, but it also is very underrated because it came out so close to The Sixth Sense, and sadly, both stories do hold a bit of similarities. I still think Stir of Echoes is the better film, the scarier film, and the one you should choose between the two. Number three, Stir of Echoes. Number two on my list is Alexandre Aya's 2005 breakthrough horror film, High Tension. Apart from being a very scary movie with great characters and terrifying scenes, this film is very well shot. The cinematography is colorful and gorgeous, and really defines the fine line between horror film and art feature. So, we follow a girl 
who brings her friend to visit her family for a weekend. Little do we know, a very crazy psychopath decides to show up at the door and start causing trouble in the form of killing people. A lot of people that I talked to about this movie said, right after that particular scene on the staircase, they couldn't continue watching because it got too graphic for them. And I will say that it's a very graphic film. It's also a very well-made film. It really develops its mysteries well, develops its characters excellently, and the twist by the end will blow your mind. There's one particular scene when one of the girls is talking to the other, professing something that she feels about her, and I think it's extremely terrifying, the expression that this character holds, and the way they're just talking to their friend. It really is one of the better horror films of the 2000s, and I think it really did well in establishing Alexandre Aja as a worthy director. I did like his remake of The Hills Have Eyes, I thought it was well done, but I wasn't really much of a fan of Mirrors, so if you haven't seen it, High Tension, 2005, directed by Alexandre Aja. It's a great film. So you might ask yourself, what is the number one film on this list? What is the one film that I feel really defines a great horror film, and even a unique horror film that I think is great for a Halloween horror movie night? Well, that film is none other than Thomas Alfredson's 2008 Swedish horror film, Let the Right One In. Yes, it has a remake. In 2010, it was released in the States as Let Me In, starring none other than Chloe Grace Moritz, hit girl herself. But while I think it's a decent remake, while I think it's honorable, and while I think it has its qualities, it's the original that really kept the greatest impact on me. What I love so much is how subtle it is. I love how it defines this setting you know, introduces you to this landscape, a snowy Stockholm suburb, a young boy named Oscar who's constantly bullied at school. He wants to fight back, but he knows he can't. He feels he can't defend himself against these guys. Eventually, he meets a very mysterious young girl that's living right next door to him. Her name is Ellie. Well, Ellie has a secret, not much of a secret when she reveals that she's a vampire, and they strike a friendship. Ellie tries to teach things to Oscar, tries to help him, and Oscar gives her the one thing she's always needed in her life, a friend. Director Thomas Alfredson did great cinematography. It's very geometric in the way it captures its images. You'll notice that there's such a great use of angles and shapes, and it's also perfectly constructed. But what I love so much about Alfredson's direction and his writing is that he managed to scare you, but at the same time really helped you get involved with these characters. You really start to believe in them. You start to feel for them, and more than anything, you become very attached to them. The climax in the pool is incredible. It has a very, very huge amount of influence from the Coen brothers and what it shows and what it doesn't show. But by the end of the film, you're gonna feel something you don't often feel at the end of a horror film, a sense of love and a sense of hope. And kind of in a way, a lot of conflicted emotions as to whether what these people are doing are right or not. What I love as well is that despite being such a deep and very mature horror film, these two characters have such a sense of innocence to them. And you'll notice it as you watch the film. You know that you're watching a film for adults. You'll know that it's a horror film. But the way these two characters, these children, tell the story and they help the film flow along really brings out such a level of innocence that you don't find in a film of this type very often. So therefore, if you haven't seen 2008's Let the Right One In, and I put a huge emphasis on the Swedish version, Let the Right One In, and not the American remake, I highly urge you to watch it. Number one on my list, let the right one in. Ah yes, we sincerely hope that you have truly been frightened by the list today. Ten films and four runners up should give you a lot of great things to watch between now and Halloween. If you happen to pee your pants at any time viewing these movies, share your story with us. Don't talk loud at gmail.com, follow us on Twitter at Don't Talk Loud, post to our Facebook, or subscribe to our site. Don't talk loud.com. We'll see you on the next episode. Click subscribe, click subscribe, or I will come and find you. Click subscribe, or I will come and find you.